Here with uh, Dan O'Neill, senior lecturer at the University of Leeds, uh, Department of Earth and the Environment. And we're going to have a conversation with Dan about uh, the writing process. Sounds good. I'd say for me it's probably because I have to. I uh -huh. suppose you know I've never particularly enjoyed writing. I, I, I shouldn't say that. I when I was in high school, I mm -hmm. enjoyed writing short stories, and I, I did mm -hmm. that for fun. Mm -hmm. But I find academic writing to be something quite quite different from mm -hmm. that. And it's a more I don't know. It's a more stressful way to write because you're you're very constrained in terms mm -hmm. of of the structure that you can use. Everything mm -hmm. has to be carefully referenced. You have to choose the words that you're using mm -hmm. uh, very carefully as well. Not that you don't have to do that in in fiction, but in mm -hmm. fiction somehow it's it's more fun because you're allowed to be more expressive with the language, I guess, than you are. Well, there are some there are some writing. academic writers that they're quite creative, yeah. and you read their papers, and it gives you pleasure just by reading them, no? yeah. not, not only in terms of the content. You, you think it's possible or, or is, it, is it very hard or is it...? I, I, yeah, I, de like, I definitely think there's some sort of continuum there. Mm -hmm. And so I read uh, a paper by Tillman, Tillman Hartley. Dr. Tillman Hartley is a political scientist with a PhD from the University of Bristol. He researches debt, growth and the environment. It was very interesting to read. It was a bit of a page turner as an academic oh, yeah. paper because it was largely a history, uh -huh. sort of 5,000 years of, yeah. of the history of money. And so, you know, a lot of people died, particularly in Roman <laughs> times. You know, the, the basic yeah. thesis seemed to be there's a lot of debt and everyone dies. You know, there's yeah. a lot of debt and everyone dies. Yeah. And so, you know, there were, there were sort of characters in, in that story. Whereas mm -hmm. the kind of writing I do is usually for some sort of quantitative analysis. And yeah. I guess in that sense, the characters are, are graphs and tables. And those are sort of the sorts of things I'm, I'm describing. So. Probably just the motivation to do it, I think. <clears throat> you know, I sort of getting started in the writing process. And once mm -hmm. I'm actually started and, and working on it, then mm -hmm. Then I wouldn't say it's it's easy, but at least I'm 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 doing it. But mm -hmm. I, I just find it to be kind of an innateful, stressful thing mm -hmm. to be to be doing. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not particularly enjoying it while I'm doing it, but I very much enjoy what's sort of produced at the end of that when I when I read over what I've written. Do you suffer with every single word? Like you try to choose your words very carefully, or do you just write one big blow and then you look at it and then you have to to redraft it? I think that's maybe where my writing's changed a little bit. I think I used to suffer more on sort of the word by word basis in the yeah. sense of so, somewhat of a perfectionist. And so I'd write a sentence and I wouldn't be happy with it. And then I'd sort of backspace, backspace, mm -hmm. rewrite, backspace, backspace. And mm -hmm. it's not really a very efficient way of doing it. And so mm -hmm. now I try more to just get things down on paper, to get something down on mm -hmm. paper and then sort of iteratively go back and, mm -hmm. and edit. Because mm -hmm. I find I kind of like editing. I just don't like generating the content in the first instance, if that makes mm -hmm. any, any sense. Mm -hmm. So I try to do it a little bit more now as a stream of consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, getting the ideas down on paper so that there's something there, mm -hmm. you know, sort of the 80-20 the rule that mm -hmm. you can sort of get 80% of the content in about 20% of the time, right? And mm -hmm. so try to get that down and then go back and, and refine mm -hmm. it. during my master's degree. It was on human appropriation of net primary production yeah. or, or HAMP. Okay. Um, I'm not going to rush to find it and read it, but uh, <laughs> it was relatively, how was it? Yeah, it was very, you... relatively technical. I, I don't really remember uh, in, in terms of the process of, of writing it. Yeah. Uh, I remember being very pleased about getting it published and you know getting a copy, a hard copy of the actual journal and I mm -hmm. still have that somewhere. This uh -huh. is my first article and uh -huh. it's published and it had some very colorful uh, colorful figures, maps uh -huh. in it. it. It had maps, so that was cool. Those mm -hmm. were kind of the characters mm -hmm. in that particular paper. Um, and so, yeah, that, I remember being, you know, it was like, well, now I'm, now I'm a writer. I'm a published writer. In, so in, you managed, you, you went to uh, your first paper, master's, and you started writing and it worked for you. So you didn't, you didn't stumble big time with writing. So the, 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 you had some easiness with it? Yeah, I'd always... You know, both of my parents sort of came from writing backgrounds. My mm -hmm. father was a college English instructor and my mother mm -hmm. published 
a number of short stories. And so I always kind of had guidance from them when I was growing up. I'd show them essays and stuff I was writing in school. Mm -hmm. And so I think even, you know, when I started uh, writing, well, it's, it's interesting because my, my bachelor's degree was in the natural sciences. And so we mm -hmm. did very little writing. Mm -hmm. It was mostly equations and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so my master's degree was the first time I really had to, to write essays. Mm -hmm. And so I think there must have been some kind of learning curve going, mm -hmm. going through that particular process, mm -hmm. though. You know, it was long enough ago now. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. particularly remember. One of the things that I very much try to do in my writing is to eliminate jargon you know, mm -hmm. wherever possible. Mm -hmm. And I think there's maybe even a temptation in academia to do the opposite thing, to try and demonstrate that you're clever by using lots of big words. And, mm -hmm. and for me, again, uh, you know, it's, it's very much about trying to, to reach an audience. And again, when you're writing, you have to think about that. If you're writing something for The Guardian, you're going mm -hmm. to choose words in a different way than if you're writing an academic article. Mm -hmm. But I, I still you know, feel the need to, to really explain any terms that I, that I use mm -hmm. in the papers. And particularly, again, for sustainability, where it's quite an interdisciplinary area. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I often sort of say, okay, well, how would I describe this if I were trying to explain it to my grandmother or to a friend down at the mm -hmm. top? And that's something I, I tell my students as well. So who do you have in mind? When, when you write, do you have in mind someone like that, someone like very familiar, or do you have in mind the editor or the audience of ecological economics? I guess you have to have both in mind, but I, I think when I'm writing, it's it's more that I have the you know, my grandmother. Because it's not uh, the same, you know. When I when I defended my PhD thesis, yeah. I remember my family being there and looking at me, you know, yeah. and I completely had to block them out because I realized right. that what I was presenting didn't make any sense to them. Okay. They were very happy there with their cameras, <laughs> but I knew that if I started yeah. talking to them, then yeah. I would lose my commit, you know. So it's yeah. not it's not the same audience sometimes. Though I understand the challenge of simplifying to yeah. a level that they could understand, no? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I guess the tendency, I think, is to go in the opposite direction, you know, is to, to, is to write stuff which to is too for your technical mm -hmm. uh, or that is, that is not clear enough. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always trying to think, what's the clearest way that I can, I can communicate this message? You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of the guiding principle for me in my writing is, mm -hmm. is sort of clarity and, and mm -hmm. being concise. Mm -hmm. a better idea of what the structure of an academic article is you know it mm -hmm. becomes a little bit more formulaic in the sense that you know mm -hmm. that there is an introduction and that kind of ends with a roadmap of what's to come and then you move into mm -hmm. the literature review and I become more familiar with just with the mechanics of writing each mm -hmm. of those things and so maybe my papers have become a bit more consistent mm -hmm. in that sense whereas the first paper again it would I'd be kind of curious now to go back and look at the at the structure of, mm -hmm. of exactly what I did there mm -hmm. Not a morning person, and so um, so I am. I'm not at my best in the morning, but okay. I, I think I still think it's useful for me to start writing in the morning because mm -hmm. it because of eliminating those other distractions. And so I think looking at email in the morning is one of the worst things you can do. And so if mm -hmm. I'm writing, I will leave email to the the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Not so much because I'm more productive in the morning, but just because there might be some email in there that stresses me out, or yeah. suddenly I, I I find I spend an hour or two dealing with stuff in my inbox. Yes, yes. And so for me, it's much better just to, to, to start working on it, mm -hmm. even though I'm, I'm probably much more productive in the afternoon. Once I actually start it, then I'm quite focused. And so that's mm -hmm. the challenge for me is to actually get putting sentences down. And then once I'm, I'm doing that, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite focused. And so mm -hmm. again, for me, the, the, probably the two most important things are to get uh, quite a bit of sleep. Yeah. And so if I don't get enough sleep, I find I can't think particularly clearly. Mm -hmm. you know, I could do other things. I could do data analysis. But mm -hmm. uh, to write, you know, I find I really need to be sort of at my best mentally to, to put all the pieces together. Mm -hmm. uh, and so coffee is the other thing which is important than that, you mm -hmm. know, getting the right amount of coffee. Yeah, me, I can write. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, okay, I need the coffee, etc. I can write, but uh, I, I don't get fully fully absorbed in it. So I get distracted or I get tired, I would say, because I work very intensely. Mm, okay. And then I constantly, I mean, I constantly go to Twitter, you know, like oh, yeah. while I write, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just jump on Twitter. And sometimes I said, okay, this is a bad habit. I have to yeah. stop it. I have to close email, Twitter, yeah. everything. 
and just write. But then if I do that because I feel it's intense work writing, yeah. I get really tired, you know? Okay. While uh, going to Twitter for a while and picking up a random fight now, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> relaxes you for five minutes and then you go back to really? writing. Really? Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't recommend that. That's, that's off the record. No? Yeah, yeah. we have a kind of freedom uh, to do you know to do things that most people don't have and I, I mm -hmm. think that's at least in the UK system it is kind of being clawed away now by this mm -hmm. by all these performance metrics and, and sort of additional administrative stuff that have been built on top of that but mm -hmm. but you know, there's still a, a core of that at least which exists in, in mm -hmm. my job and an opportunity to explore interesting questions and and you know talk to people about them and and the writing you know, is not my favorite part of that process. You know, what I what I enjoy is actually doing the research. I enjoy uh, giving presentations about it. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of funny. I I much more enjoy sort of verbal communication, I think, mm. than than written communication. Mm -hmm. And so I often, you know, will cr create a PowerPoint presentation or a presentation around the ideas I'm working on. Deliver those at a conference before I start working on the paper because mm -hmm. I think I think a bit more verbally. Mm -hmm. um, and even when I'm writing, I I try to sometimes I'll speak out loud, you know, to test out a sentence or, or something mm -hmm. to see if it's clear to me. I, it's, it's more obvious to me if I actually say, say the words mm -hmm. uh, when I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's just because I'm, I'm something of a, of a verbal thinker. But I, I think the research is still, um, and, and sort of the freedom and the flexibility to explore some of these questions is, mm -hmm. is, is probably the strongest mm -hmm. thing about it. Right, I don't know what you're talking Sorry. about. I grew up in the north of Scotland. I don't understand any kind of problem with this.